Reviews are here and prices are in. We have all the details you need to know about before the launch for the 5090s. So reviews launched this morning and I have had the opportunity to look over all the reviews and so far the review looks pretty promising as far as performance goes. As far as raw performance, no DLSS, no none of that extra stuff, AI frame generated like you all have been not really enjoying lately, just raw performance, prime example on Far Cry 6, as you guys can see here, at 4K resolution, maxed out quality, you have the 4090 averaging 130 FPS, while the 5090 is averaging 191. So across the board from everything that we've been seeing, the performance is pretty substantial. Now the bigger question is, of course, pricing, which we'll get to later on in the video, but for right now, let's concentrate on performance. Let's move over to a different game. Another one that I was looking at was Hitman 3. All right, so on Hitman 3, obviously I don't recommend to get a 5090 to run at 1080p. This GPU is definitely designed for 1440p and 4K resolution. At 1440p, you definitely recommend to get 360 hertz monitor. 4K, you can get the 240 hertz monitor. There's a lot of good monitors coming out from CES, but you can see right now, even at 1440p, the 4090 was already hitting 369 FPS at ultra settings on Hitman and now the 5090 is hitting 442. I mean, we're getting in close to the 500s, and again, this is without DLSS. I'm gonna keep repeating this because I know a lot of people out there, even during my live stream today, were like, oh, this is with DLSS AI frame generation. No, this is not. I'm gonna show you what it looks like with DLSS 4 later on as well in this video, and it gets kind of crazy when it comes to the numbers. At 4K resolution, Hitman 3 was averaging almost 300 FPS. I've, I would never think I would see the day that you get to play 4K natively it hit 293 FPS, while the 4090 was hitting 231, and the 7900 XTX was right at 202, and the 4080 down to 176. Like the 40, the 5090 is looking like it's almost double the performance of the 4080 Super. So the the so far, like I said, these numbers to me are pretty promising. Which I will go over the generational leaps of the 3090 to the 4090, the 4090 to the 5090 and I'll kind of explain some stuff as to why the difference as far as raw performance is not the same as the 3090 to the 4090. Uh, moving on to The Witcher 3, which this is one that I've played many times. And again, FPS at 1080p is pointless. It's at 557 FPS. Please do not play at 1080p with this GPU. It is kind of pointless at that point. 1440p, you're looking at 462 FPS versus 360 on the 4090. And then at 4K, again, you're looking at a solid 293 FPS at 4K and then 210 on the 4090. So you're looking at a nice 80 FPS difference. That is huge. Like the, the performance is crazy. And again, this is at max detail. Yes, I know this is older games, but for us to test this because th these games are very GPU bound, we can't really test BR games like Fortnite, Call of Duty, because unfortunately you can never get the same thing on the screen while you're testing and to get the correct numbers, you have to have the same repeated screens with the same repeated things on the screen at the same time. It's just a mess when it comes to any BR game. So BR, if you wanna look at performance for BRs, we'll do that later on once we get the GPUs in hand and we'll show you side by side on that in a future video. All right, so as far as DLSS 4 goes uh, with the frame generation, a lot of people are confusing the two things. DLSS is there, but then frame generation is the new technology and there's different ways to utilize it. There's a times two, times three, and times four when it comes to frame generation. And this is what I kind of wanted to show you on the graph here, as you can see. On Hogsworth Le Legacy, ray tracing enabled, ultra quality, which we know this game was pretty hard to run, with four times frame generation, you're looking at 933 FPS at 1080p. Again, I tried DLSS 4 with frame generation on in person, and I'm telling you right now, I know there's a lot of things going out there, it's fake frames, it's not whatever. It felt really good, felt smooth, and it was pretty responsive as well. Um, the games felt really good, and like I said, clarity was there, it wasn't bad. Everyone's still stuck on the old generation of DLSS when it first came out back in 2019. Yes, it was blurry, yes, it wasn't the greatest image, but you got a little boost in performance. Now we're looking at this crazy jump in performance. At 1440p, you're looking at 720 FPS, and at 4K, you're looking at 523 FPS versus 162 without frame generation. So. It's there, the performance is there, and this is one of the main reasons why these GPUs are costing so much is because everything moving forward, whether you like it or not, it's all AI driven. A lot of it is gonna be AI driven. This is what these cards are literally launching with. It's just gonna be a ton of AI stuff, and you just gotta enjoy it. And like I'm telling you, if you try it yourself, DLSS 4 with uh, frame generation, I think you're gonna love it. All right, and one last thing to cover about the DLSS 4 and the frame generation is when I was streaming this morning, talking about the performance, people were like, 
It's fake frames, so if I'm playing Fortnite or a competitive game and I happen to shoot someone in the head, is that the real frame or is that a fake frame or, or whatever AI generated frame? So is that person really gonna get hit with my bullet? So to explain to you real quick is the AI frame generation, it's not designed, me personally, I don't think it's designed for competitive gaming. It's more designed for single player games that are very GPU heavy, like Cyberpunk, um, Hogsworth Legacy, like games that are very heavy on that, where that does not matter because you're not playing against someone over a server, whatever it may be. In those games anyways, at the very moment, like Fortnite, like Call of Duty, you're already hitting four or 500 FPS anyways with a 4090. So I don't see a reason why to use DLSS4 with uh, frame generation on a 5090 when you're hitting those crazy numbers on current 40 series gen cards. Even a 4070 Ti Super on Fortnite, you're still hitting 300 plus FPS. So to me, there's no reason why to use frame generation on competitive games because they're pretty easy to run to begin with. Valorant's very CPU bound. Um, I mean, League of Legends is competitive. Obviously, you don't need that much FPS on that. Uh, well, you do, just not that crazy amount. Uh, same thing with Fortnite, same thing with uh, Apex, all that stuff. So once again, DLSS4, frame generation, personally, it's gonna be used for single player, heavy bound graphical games. So for this last part, there is a disclaimer. These prices that you're about to see are not from us. These are leaks that we found online. A lot of them came from Reddit. So again, I, I, I couldn't say they're 100% official, but these leaks, from the guesses that we have made, uh, with example, the Astral GPU, they're stating it is gonna be at $27.99. So again, NVIDIA had their pricing at $19.99 for the Founders Edition, and now these are the AIB partners like Asus, MSI, Gigabyte, PNY. The ones we have on this list are gonna be Asus and MSI mainly. So like I said, the Astral, $27.99. So would you pay $2,800 for an Astral model, $50.90? You guys let me know in the comments below. Um, then the Tough, which the Asus Tough was a pretty big part of our uh, um, you know, journey for the 40 series. And those right now on this list are showing is gonna be $24.49. So that's a $450 increase over the Founders Edition model. And then you have MSI with their Liquid Supreme, which is 2,500, it's 2,499. You have the Gaming Trio, which is 2,349. Uh, you have the Ventus 30C, which is like their entry level GPU with MSI, it's at 2,199. And then the Vanguard, which is like a limited edition that they're doing, uh, that's at 2,379.99. Now, a little bonus, there was a leak as well of the 5080 series and the ROG Astral OC model 5080, which again, let me know if you guys would pay this price in the comments, is $1899 for a 5080 Astral model. So if you guys don't know what the Astral is, look it up. It's the four fan GPU. It's the new one that Asus came out with. It's the new top of line GPU above the Strix model. And it's looking like the uh, 5080 is averaging around $1199 all the way up to about $1699 for the, wow, the Asus Tough Gaming OC is $16.99. That's, that's actually kind of crazy. Uh, again, these are leaks, so we're not sure 100%, but so far we're looking at the $11.99 price point all the way up to $19 for the 5080, and the 5090 you're looking at, $19.99 for the Founders Edition, all the way up to $27.99. So an $800 difference, which is insane to me. With all that being said, the release date for the 5090 and the 5080 is gonna be January 30th. Now keep in mind, this is gonna be a new hot item in the tech world. So we all know from past history that these are gonna be very hard to get. Um, so just make sure to see if you can get one retail-wise. If not, at PowerGPU will be taking orders starting the 30th as well. So you can get your queue, get in line, and hopefully you can get one sooner than you can get one at a retail location. But that's all from PowerGPU.